nowadays men treat us as options like we're options like they you know they get to kind of dribble and dabble and see what they want they get to pick and choose and we're made to feel like we're an option and so i feel like when we have when we feel like that it's almost like you're competing for a shot you know what i'm saying like on the team so that's one of the reasons why i wanted to deal with that and then tie in how it makes us as women and uh, men may feel the same there may be some men who feel the same way but the rejection that goes along with it because there's a sense of rejection especially if you're not chosen if you're not picked if someone chooses to go in one direction and not the other like how to, that, how to deal with that and then i wanted to deal with the comparison piece you know a lot of times us as women we compare And I can only see from the female's perspective. I can't see from the male perspective. But as a woman, we tend to compare ourselves to the other person if we know who she is. If we've seen, if we've seen the person, if we've seen the photo, we want to know like what she looked like. Does she look better than me? Is she cuter than me? What is it that that person offers that we can't offer or that we don't? Or what is you know what's the difference? Like why her and not me? So um, I wanted to deal with those three subcategories of the topic, the competition and dating. Yeah. What do you think about, well, I'll let you go ahead and just go ahead and kind of set the stance about the, the dispelling the myth of the, you know, dispelling the myth when it comes to competition. I mean, again, as I've, <clears throat> again, as I've stated before, um, I just feel like people should believe in themselves and who they are and what they bring to the table. And the reason, one of the reasons being is because the minute you start focusing on the other individual and trying to see well, what it is about this person that they like more, this, that, and the other, you lose focus into what you're doing as far as how you're pouring into the relationship or the person yourself. There's no need for you to compare yourself to another individual because at the end of the day, Either your efforts or what you're doing and bring it to the table will be good enough or it won't. And if it's not, then they're probably doing you a favor by not choosing you because, you know, for whatever their reasons, you know what I'm saying, they're, they're not going to appreciate you and what you bring to the table. So the reason I, another reason I feel like that is because, for one, as an athlete, right, a lot of times in what we do, especially in the game of basketball, so – I'm going to speak from that perspective. Okay. Um, basketball is obviously a team sport, and mm -hmm. you have five different positions on the court, and on each team you're going to have a couple of different positions, uh, different players that play each position just in case somebody gets injured, somebody gets hurt, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I don't like the sound of this already. Go ahead. No, 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 but 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 it makes sense because from the standpoint of why I'm saying you can only focus on what you do and what you bring to the table because the minute I start saying, well, why is this guy starting over me? You know, I'm better than he is. Okay. I'm this. I'm that. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. No, it's so funny because the coach thinks that they have something more to offer than you do. That's why. Yeah, but 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 what I'm saying is. Even in this, even in this game, right? Whether the coach, because when you talk about this and you break it down, sometimes people's contracts are different. Sometimes it could be the situation, it could be politics, it could be anything that comes into that. Mm -hmm. I say all that to say because sometimes there are guys who are better on the bench than the guys who are actually starting. So it doesn't. Right. There's it, no need for you to sit up there and compare yourself to what somebody else is doing or what they bring. Just focus on what you bring to the table and be the best at doing that. Because if you start putting your energy into everything else and everywhere else, you're going to start blocking your blessings and blocking the things that are supposed to come your way and how you're supposed to be functioning whenever it's time for you to get in the game. If I'm focused, okay, if so I'm on the bench, listen, listen, hold on. If I'm on the bench, right, mm -hmm. and I'm hating on somebody that's on my team playing my position, my mm -hmm. mindset already, I'm not in the game. So the minute it's okay, my so turn okay. to get in and perform – I can't perform right because I've been pouring salt and I've been hating and I've been negative. So, okay. therefore, I'm not going to be able to compete and do the things that I need to do and function how I need to function to bring what I need to bring to the team. And that makes sense in the context 
in which you're giving your description, but I feel like in the context of dating, the fact that the person even knows about the competition, the person even knows about the other person is a problem. I feel like, the, you know, unless they just found out by default, okay? If they found out by default, that's one thing. But if they're being told about that person, then they already, in my opinion, are a step above, right? They're okay, so then they need to make a decision. If so, if, if I, if in the event, right, say you're dealing with somebody and you tied in and no, then they tell you about, about, right, and I understand that. And they tell you like, listen, I'm dealing with somebody else. And if you choose to say, look, I'm not going to deal with that, then you need to walk away. If you understand right? where you at with it and what you want to do, depending on the situation that you're in, then you need to mm -hmm. make a decision that's best for you. Period. Right. Some people will say, look, I ain't worried about that person. I'm going to keep fighting and do my thing because I feel like that person is worth it. I'm, I'm just going to ten so toes down. Okay, so that person, like, first of all, that person may be worth it, but the both of y'all are worth it. Like, it got to be, like, a mutual understanding. It shouldn't be one person fighting for the other person. It should be... The two people fighting for one another. I, absol I absolutely agree. But we're asking about in this particular situation. First of all, mm -hmm. Chanel, there's so many different pieces to this that we're missing. We don't know how serious it is. We don't know if a person just has a great feel about the other person. We don't know if there was an understanding going into it. There's a lot of things that's missing out of this. So we're just going off of, of an in, in general type okay. of situation or statement. Okay, so I don't think that it's general because there's certain so certain elements to the context that we're trying to describe to the people where I can say, okay, we don't know how serious it is, right? But if it is, then why do you have? Why are you even communicating with someone else? If it's serious, then you shouldn't even invite somebody into that. Because I totally, I totally agree. Is, I'm not agreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. Have to. But you, you okay, yeah, right. So I'm saying you, I'm agreeing with you, so that's what I'm saying. But we're not talking about that, we're not talking about the obvious, right? The obvious, you should cut those. Like, if you fit, I know, but what you just stated was an obvious situation. If you feel like this person is the one, and if that feeling is mutual, it shouldn't be no other person, point blank, period. Somebody got to get cut off if that's going to be the case, but. If it's a situation and there's some, some other dynamics in which, hell, I don't know what it could be, then that's totally different. And even if that's the difference, then the person who feels like they're in competition with somebody else needs to make a decision. They need to say, look, I'm going to do my part. I ain't going to focus on what's going on over there. Or they're going to say, look, I ain't got time for that, and I'm walking away, point blank, period. But one way or the other, there needs to be a decision made and a conversation had. So I had this conversation with two people this week because we you know because of the topic that we were going to discuss tonight and i had the conversation with a male and a female now i had uh -huh. a male say he had a situation where he was dating someone and he met someone else and he was actually interested in getting to know the other female however like the girl was like well, you know why didn't you back out to me or why didn't you call me and he was like because i'm in a situation and I didn't want to invite you into that. Like, I wanted to resolve that. And I could respect that because that was like, you know, he didn't, because that type, that stuff chips away at your self-esteem. But then there was a woman on the flip side who said, I don't really care what the other, what the guy is doing with whoever else, because I'm number one. And you can walk around and be confident and think you're number one until you find out you're not. See, that's the problem that I have. Like, I'm not consumed or concerned about the other person because for me personally, I'm just speaking for Chanel, if in a situation like that, I know I'm number one. I'm not concerned about that. I know what I bring to the table, but I don't want to be so overly confident, like, oh, I'm number one, I don't care. And the next thing you know, you have invested your heart. And it's very difficult not to invest your heart, not to invest your emotions when you are engaging someone. Like, that's why people get broken. I don't, I don't think nobody wants a broken heart, but when you engage someone on that level, you know what I'm saying? And then you don't have clear, you know, con like expectations for what the relationship calls for, then you end up in a crazy situation. And then the man will be like, oh, she crazy. She crazy. No, she's weird.
dictionary because uh, you have in a situation now she feels like she's competing now she got self-esteem issues like it's just something that i want to put out there and make other people aware of that when you invite you in this situation you got to be clear about what you want because the one thing you, you mess people up like that and i agree with you firecracker 100 percent. but again you keep on but you keep on but the thing is right for one, you keep on talking about how you feel versus the next person. So we got to be understanding of that. Everybody's different. Now that we passed that and everybody's different, there has to be, again, a decision made. If you're dealing with somebody, Chanel, and this guy tells you, like, look, I got this other situation over here, then you need to be why like, all right, we need that? to have a conversation. Why is he telling her that, though? I don't know why he's telling her that. We didn't get into that. You you wanted to focus on the competitional aspect of it, right? So we got to take it one layer at a time. Yeah, but we're going one layer at a time. We're going one layer at a time, Queen. One layer at a time. And because of that, again, if you are involved in somebody and he tell you something like that, then you need to sit up there and say, look, we need to have a conversation. And if he ain't trying to have a conversation, then you need to make a decision. But if he's trying to have a conversation, you need to let him know where you stand with it and put your foot down when it comes to that. Therefore, he understands what's going on because he can't get mad if he lose out. That's on him. Right. If somebody yeah, messed that up, that's on them. Right. That's all I'm saying. If they mess it up, it's on them. That ain't on you. Because at the end of the day, whether it's the competitional piece, whether it's the woman who was good and was dogged, whether it, like we can name all of these scenarios, a woman could sit up there and say, well, that's chipping away at my self-esteem or that's, you know, crack, putting a chink in my armor or this, that, and the other. Like, that's why I always say, you got to focus on what you do. Because the minute we start focusing on what everybody else is doing, what they bring it to the table, what they not bring it to the table, man, that stuff gets distorted in what we trying to do. If I'm focused on the next man, if I'm focused on the next person, if I'm sitting up here wondering why her friends talking bad about me, why her family don't like me, why this person acting this way, then I can, I can use the same situation we looking at competition and take that with everything else. And the minute I pour into all of this negativity, I'm going to get all of that right back. But wait a minute. Those are two different situations because if someone, if you and another person has chosen to be together, who cares about what her family and her, she needs to reinforce that to her family. That's her position. Like, not to just letting you get dogged by, by her family. Like, but I'm giving you an... Listen, but listen to the context. Listen to the context of the example. I'm just okay. letting you know what happens when you start putting your energy into other things. You're, you got to listen right. to me, Queen. I know you're passionate, but just listen to what I'm saying because I'm using a context. Okay, so because of the context, what I'm saying is the minute we start focusing on everything else, we will not be able to focus on what we are doing and how we are bringing what we need to bring to the table. That's all okay. I'm saying. Point and that is the male perspective because see this is the thing because we our whole mission right is to change the narrative and the point that I'm trying to get out is for those of you who are in situations like that where you have options and you just want to have fun or you don't want to be in a serious relationship or you don't want to be committed or you just want to see what's out there you are messing up somebody else you really are. Especially well, if, guys, if they've... If you guys are on the same page. If you're on the same page and you've had the conversation and you both have an understanding and they understand that and they are cool with that, that's one thing. That's one situation. But if you got somebody who has clearly let you know what it is they want, what they're looking for, then, you know, and they have to be accountable for their participation in all of this. Don't get me wrong. But you don't need to engage somebody like that and be playing games. That's all I'm saying. I, I think we got that at the beginning, Queen. You made that 
Loud and clear. I'm changing stamped. the narrative. You stamped it. Because people are like, well, I'm just having I, fun. I know, but I, I think, too, if you talking to somebody and you get that vibe from the beginning, I think you kind of need to know where you need to put them. That's just my opinion. That's just me giving my opinion. In some situations, right? When we talked about in the first part uh, podcast and even in the second one, right? I'll reiterate. When you first meet somebody, there needs to be a clear cut conversation that needs to be had, especially, right? For example, if you're in a place in your life, you know what it is that you want, you know what it is, where you're at with it, then you need to. You you yourself need to put that out there. You don't need to wait on the other person. The problem happens is when the problem happens is when we say, I'm not gonna sit up there and say too much because I don't want to scare this person. I'm not gonna sit up there and say the wrong thing because I don't want them to think that I'm crazy or I'm this or I'm that. Bump all that. If you are in a space in your life, you know what it is that you want, you need to put that out there. You need to be very clear in it. You need to be, be really upfront and transparent in your communication. And that is absolutely correct. Also, I want to add to that when you're first meeting someone, you need to ask the hard questions. I know I, absolutely. Have, been, I have been in situations where, you know, I don't, I didn't engage the hard conversation. You know, I didn't ask the right questions when, in fact, I had a whole lot of questions because I didn't want to turn the person off. But at the same time, like, what about the situation when the person isn't up front with you at first? Or, you know, you, you do ask the questions and the person still doesn't necessarily, they don't either tell you the truth or they withhold information. So what about those situations? What do you do? Because now you're, you're coming in under one um, idea and then there's something else going on behind the scenes. People aren't completely honest nowadays. Right. So in those cases, just continue to be open, continue to be honest in where you're at and what you're feeling. The more you get to talking with people, and, and that's the, the whole other part of when you're getting a vibe with somebody, right? You can tell when a person is engaged when they're not. And even, let's just say, because I know you're going to ask, let's say the person is engaged but still maybe has some other things going on. Therefore, you still need to be upfront and honest about where it is, where you're at with it. So maybe you should say, listen, I understand we building, but something is not feeling right. Like, I need to ask you something and be upfront with whatever that is. But just don't feel bad about being open and honest and asking the hard questions and staying on that. If you don't get the answer the first time, you might need to ask it again or again right. or whatever. But us as people, we know what we get when we around somebody, the way the phone conversations are going, how the text conversations are going. We understand energy. We understand that law of attraction. We get it. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we don't. But at the end of the day, when our gut is telling us something or we're feeling a little funny about something, we need to be open. We need to be honest. We need to engage. We need to see what's going on and try to figure it out. Point right. blank period. And ladies, I don't want you guys to be feel any type of way about asking those questions in the beginning because a lot of times, because I'm a lady, and I know a lot of times I don't want to, you're like so excited, you, you know, you let this amazing guy and, you know, you don't want to overwhelm him with questions. You know, you want things to be just right, right? You want things to be perfect. You don't want to start nagging and, you know, getting on his nerves and being annoying. But it's important that you ask those questions in the beginning because if you don't, you're going to regret it later. Regret it. I think it need I think it need to be the same thing for men too, because I understand okay. there's this stigma when it comes to us, but there there are some there are a lot of good guys out there who are ready and who are willing, and they just may not know how to go about it, but they need to be upfront with where they're at. They need to, you know, communicate the things that's on their mind and be open about it. If somebody's not affectionate, say that. If you're trying to work on Gain and trust, say it. If you've been hurt, say it. If you're healing, say it. Whatever it is, we have to do our part to communicate as well. It goes both ways. And But then sometimes you do say it, and it's like it going one end out the other. People are going to do what they want to do. That's true. I'm um, with you. It's, it's like nowadays, <laughs> it's very difficult to trust. I struggle with that it, personally. I struggle with trust, and that's because people are... And it for what they can get sometimes. People are selfish nowadays, you know? They are. They, yes, are. they are. And 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 in the event 
if you're open, continue continue to to try to get that understanding. You know what I mean? Like, don't be discouraged. You know, things happen. I think sometimes we got to pay attention to the small things and the little details instead of looking for the big answers. Because sometimes things Life. happen. Sometimes we can see something and and get an understanding of a person just by by paying attention. But it's like, you know what, why you gotta, like, you know what, nowadays, sometimes, you, you know, people gonna show you what they want to show you, right? And so, it's like, why do you gotta do all that and you can just ask, like, you know, what's up, what's going on? You know, and I, then, you I know, think, I think, but, but see, now what you're saying is, right, at the end of the day, Queen, in the matters of the heart, we need to, hold on, at the end of the day, in the matters of the heart, we need to do whatever it takes when it comes to that because we need to be ultimately prepared for how we adjust. We need to be prepared for how we move forward. You know, the things that we need to do or don't do or whatever, like we can't sit up there and say, well, if I'm doing this, why do I need to do that? And vice versa. Everybody don't work like that. People come from all types of backgrounds, different situations. People done been abused. People done been you know, they've gone through a lot, been heartbroken, been taken mm -hmm. advantage of, lied to. Right. The list goes on and on and on. And right. a and lot of us, I know, right. but a lot of us, and that's why I said that the initial work has to be done within yourself. You, well, you got to constantly do the work, constantly. That's true. But, and see, this is the thing about the work, because <laughs> this is why it's, it's so important to have the conversation, because one of my fears is like, you know, you, you have... Every, we've all had experiences, right? And it, it forms how we perceive, you know, situations going forward. And then, what? you know, I know there are moments where I might, under a situation, I'm like, am I being overly paranoid, overly suspicious, or is this person really up to no good? You know, so... That's and don't, but the, here's, here's my, it, 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 I don't even want to call it advice, but my opinion on that is don't feel bad <laughs> about how you feel. I think we all need to continue to acknowledge how we feel and where we're at with stuff. Point blank period. Like we can't, you can't sit up there and, and feel bad because, you know, you're upset about something or you have doubts about something or you're questioning something or whatever. Like don't feel bad about it. Just figure out a way to address the things that you have on your mind and <laughs> figure out a way to have a healthy conversation about it and be upfront and honest. And sometimes in some <laughs> situations we feel good about it. We keep moving forward. And other times something that doesn't feel right and you keep feeling like you stuck with it, you need to make a decision. Sometimes you, you might just have to walk away. Sometimes you don't have to walk away. Sometimes you got to take your foot off the gas and give it some time. And see what, what they do and see how they come back around with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to figure out what works for you and what's best for you in that situation. Right. And, I mean, all of that is great. So what about a, well, what about a scenario where maybe I'm trying to paint the picture here. So you're in a situation where I was just having a conversation today with someone that I work with. To me, that they were in a situation with someone that fit in the same context yeah, as they did, and so while things didn't necessarily work out on the personal front, they still had to work together. So it's like that they was still had what? Situation where you still I couldn't hear it, it went in and out, huh? I couldn't hear no, you. It went saying, in and like, out. What about a scenario where you're engaging someone, co-worker of mine, engaging someone in a, in a similar context at church, and so she still has to serve with this person in ministry, even though things didn't work out on the personal front. Like, you know, so then how do you deal with situations like that? Because now she has to observe that person with someone else. You know, so then again, you're being faced with rejection, because now when she goes to church, she got to see this person with someone else possible. So how do you how do you deal with that? Pray and for him and wish him the best. How do you not how do you look at that situation and say, you know what, like why did he pick why did he pick her and not me? Like how do you work with that? Pray pray for him and wish him the best. That's all you got for me, Josh. I'm just saying, man, like some sometimes because sometimes, man, you just you just gotta wish the best for people. 
And no matter if you agree with their journey or their path or not, just hope that everything works out and, and what's best for them. What's best for them may not be best for you. That's a reality for all of us. Guess what? We've all been rejected in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> if somebody loses a job, you're not going to sit up there and, and cry, cry a river. No, you're going to get your butt back up. But that, you're going to figure out a way. And you're going to get, no, it's not, man. Listen, yes, you want me to tell is. you why? You want me to tell you why? In, in my why? opinion, it ain't two different things. Because for one, if it's something that matters to you, you're going to do what you got to do when it comes to that. Yeah, but you don't have, so if you I'm don't looking have. for a relationship, if I'm looking for a relationship, if I want a relationship, I'm going to do the work to first and foremost get myself together. I'm going to make right. sure that I'm healed. I'm going to make sure I'm in a good place. Even after me being in a good place, I still got more work to do. I still got more healing but to do. That's, I still that's, got that's more good, growing and maturing to do. That's not a good comparison. According to who? Because I didn't finish my comparison, most, though. But I didn't women, finish my comparison, though, Queen. I understand listen, you are. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. But let me say this real quick. Okay. I know you're passionate about this, but you got to be able to let me finish, right? You got to be able to let me get to from point A to point Z. You're cutting me off before I even get started. And I hear you. And I respect that I have nothing but love and respect for the queens. But this right here, how we're communicating about this, this is a prime example of what happens in real relationships and people dealing with each other. Nobody's willing to hear the other person. Everybody's willing to point out what they want. And they want the other person to hear what they got to say. And they're not willing to listen to what the other person has to say. How can we get an understanding <laughs> How can we get to a point where we're able to see each other, even if we don't agree, but at least have an understanding if we're not willing to listen to one another? The reason that I'm responding the way in which I am is because I find that a lot of times men don't have compassion for women in these particular scenarios. Like, it's a is, it, is it compassion for women or maybe the, the, what they don't have for themselves? That, that again has something, but, but that's what I'm saying. Don't sit up there and automatically assume that we don't have compassion for a woman. You don't know what a man has gone through in his life to make him be the way that he is toward anybody. We don't, we don't know that. That's what I'm saying. It has to be understanding across the board. Men are hurt. Men have gone through a lot of things. Men have been rejected. Men have been brokenhearted. Men have gone through their fair share of SHIT, Right. But because we don't communicate that, because we don't express that, that is not known. So we see bars under the rug. And then here you come with a woman, right? She comes in. She's expressive. She's emotional. She tells the man what she's feeling or where she's at with it, right? But then the minute a man opens his mouth to express any type of emotion, he's looked at as weak. He's looked at as this. He's looked at as that. It's not respected across the board. I'm not saying you. I'm saying a majority. I'm not saying you, but it has to be fair across the board. You women are so passionate about their points, their views, where they're at, that they don't give us any type of leeway in the conversation. We're not heard. So then when we set up and we operate the way that we're used to, we're the ones who are looked at. Oh, he don't appreciate me. Oh, he got all these options. Look, he a dog. Now we in competition. Look at, look at what he got me going through. The list goes on and on and on. But at the same time, you ain't, you ain't gave two cents on how he feels. You ain't asked how he feels. Even if you ask, your mind ain't ready to accept where he's because at with it. men are not transparent with how they really feel. Like, you act like if I say, if I go to a man. And let, say, let me ask so you something. Really are women, feel. no, are women, because if we're going to do that, right, don't, don't speak mm -hmm. for us, because I'm not going to speak for y'all, because what I can do okay. is, I can say the same okay. thing because you just okay. said, here's a prime example. You just said, well, when I'm talking to a guy, I don't want to sit up there and, and say too much because I don't want to scare him away. That ain't being transparent. So don't no, sit up there and get on us about what we ain't doing if you're not willing to do what your dog wants. Yeah, but how many, I don't know too many men who come and actually ask us how we really feel. Like, they don't care how we really feel. They're going to do what they want to do regardless of how we feel and that's why we're having I don't this topic I don't tonight. agree with that
I don't I, agree with that. I don't agree with that. And there, there's a reason why I don't. Because when you start looking at people and you start figuring out situations of why people are the way that they are, whether it's a generational curse, whether they grew up seeing the men in their lives treat women a certain way and they haven't broke that pattern. Like this topic has so many levels, levels and layers to it that you can't make that assumption across the board because it's not fair for every man to look at every woman and say, Oh, she a hoe. She just want this. She just want that. Oh, look, she just in it for the money or this, that, and the other. Because you wouldn't want me talking to you that way, correct? Absolutely not. You're so don't make that same right. comparison. Don't make that same comparison when it comes to everybody else. You can't do that. This is a case-by-case -case scenario. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to some of the questions because I don't want to get too far along and we not address the questions. So it's Mo says, why have, as a society, made it normal and okay to be the main or the number one instead of the only one? And you're right. I like, didn't hear. I didn't hear the question. People, she wants. She says that why have as a society made it normal and okay to be the main or the number one instead of the only one? Can you hear me? Mm -mm. The signal is. Yeah. Is it? Is it frozen? It's frozen. He'll 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 come back in a second. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to say, you know, I absolutely agree. Nowadays, we as women, we have accepted being the number one or even being number two and not the only one. We have made it okay because we just want to be in a relationship. And you finally meet someone that you really like. And he come with the okie doke talking about, I got a situation over here and you accepting of it. And that's why we have made it okay to be the main, the number one and not the only one. We have done that. that that's the answer to that. I'll let Josh, okay, let me get him back on. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see. And I'll let him answer when he get back on. This might run over tonight, y'all, to get to everybody's questions. In order to get to everybody's comment, we may run over a little bit tonight because I feel really passionate, you know, about this particular topic. Okay. You back? Josh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So the question was, and I'll let you answer it. Hold on, I'm gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna address all of the comments tonight. Oh, they did. Okay. Whatever. I'm gonna get, hold on one second. Let me look. I'm trying to get. I want um. I want to read its most uh, question again so that he has an opportunity to respond to it. So. He says, why have, as a society, made it normal and okay to be the main or the number one instead of the only one? And I basically said to her that we as women have made it okay because we allow men to treat us as options. We want to be in a relationship so bad that we accept the foolishness. We accept that he got a situation. We are accepting of it because we want to be with someone rather than putting our foot down and saying, you know what, if I can't be the only one, then I won't be nothing. Now, Josh, you, you can answer that how you feel. <laughs> Ain't nothing for me to say. You hit the nail on the head. I think it's, a, I mean, across the board, you know, people, if you want respect, demand respect. And if somebody don't give that to you, then you know how, you know what you need to do. If, right. if, if you're okay with a situation, then that's on you. That's your choice. We all right. make choices. That's, that's a choice to do that. But when you make that choice, don't be upset about what happens and what comes from that. So I agree with you. Beck says it's up to us as a woman to stay or go, period. That's true, but a lot of times we let our desires supersede our common sense and we stick around for the food. So um, Amina says, what does number one mean? Playing two, three, four, there shouldn't be another if we're exclusive. Now that's right. Now we're talking about the different levels of dating there. I mean, my my question or this topic was more so geared toward 
the beginning stages of the relationship. Now, once we're in an exclusive relationship, there ain't no situation. There ain't no other one. There ain't no nothing. It's number one. If you can't be that, then y'all ain't even exclusive because you're seeing somebody else. So. What you said, I ain't got to comment on that either. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Beck said, let the intentions be known up front, be honest, been there. A lot of, a lot of women, I guarantee every woman on this seat has been in this scenario at one time or the other. Um, Beck said, she gonna ask whatever. If he, if he doesn't like it, he's not the one. A lot of times I want to do, I do want to deal with this piece. Um, a lot of times men don't want to have that conversation. Um, a lot of times men deflect. Um, they don't want to have it. And uh, and it's not always a bad thing towards you. A lot of times they don't want to hurt your feelings. But I just wish that, you know, I would hope that. We, we got to get we gotta get out of that. Right. We got to get out of that. Men, men kings, queens, we got to get out of that. Like, if you care about somebody, respect them enough to tell them the hard things. If you look, if you care about somebody, respect them enough to apologize when you mess up. If you care about somebody, you know what I'm saying. Just do your part. Ain't nobody out here perfect. We all learning. We all growing. We all maturing. We all trying to do the best we can. Right. And and a lot of the times, man, we we are conditioned because of what we're used to, and it takes time. Some people got to go through certain motions. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes understanding. If you feel like the person is worth it, stay down for them. Help them through it. Grind with them. Don't don't be apologetic about none of that. The the other thing is too, is when when you're going through things with an individual, you got to make sure you're keeping that stuff to yourself. You got to keep that thing in house and protect what you got going on. Because the thing is, and what people do is they so busy telling everything that's going on. And the minute something happened and they done already told it, they feel a way to the outsiders because, well, why you stay with him if you know she if, if you know he doing this? Well, why you stay with her when you know she out here doing whatever? Like, it's all of that that goes on. And we right. and we all do our part in that. And that's the thing that we gotta stop doing. First of all, we gotta stop worrying about what you feeling them, go for it. Point blank, period. That's it. If it works, cool. If it doesn't, cool. But you got to do what's on your heart. You got to do what's, 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 what you feel is set out for you to do. And, and be happy with that. And it don't matter what that person's past is. It don't matter what they had going on. Like, just do what you feel at the end of the day. And be honest about it. Be open about it. Be transparent. If it works, cool. If it doesn't, cool. But protect that. And the way that you do that is when you grinding and going with it, going through things with a person, it ain't for the world to know. But if you have one individual person that you feel like you can trust them and talk to them, or if you have, you know, your two or your three or whatever, then cool. But keep it there. The problem is we running, we running too much to too many different people, too many sources. Everybody they got opinions. And if you're not sure. strong enough mentally, to take whatever with a grain of salt and make your own decision, it's going to end up being for the worse. You can't worry about that. You can't spare nobody's feelings, man. We got to be able to respect each other enough that we tell people the hard things, not just when it's good, tell them when it's bad. Tell them if you mess up, be apologetic. The list goes on and on and on. But just be transparent in how you move it. That's it. Right. So Christy Lynn, she says, I'm in a place where I'm not afraid to ask questions if he's not on the same vibe we're not right and best ended now i agree that's all that's fair that's this is good talk there is no competition the gas tank is on e self-confidence huh okay i don't, I don't know what that means either. um becky said that sucks having to see it in your face tell me what you mean by that why did he pick her? She said, okay, so J. J. Crew was like, yeah, why did he pick her and not me? It's a good question. If you, you know what? Now, I want to, yes, you can. That's what I'm about to say. 
If I'm talking to our creative director, so y'all, so I've been in a situation like this before where I had to tell someone that I went out on one date with that I was not interested. And he wanted to know why. Now, I didn't break him down. I don't believe in that. But I was very, very transparent with him so that he wouldn't leave, like, still with a whole lot of questions. I let him know we're just not going to have him. You know, I, you know, and I was a little bit more explicit than that, but I let him know in a way that he could receive it. And I said, you know, we could still be cool. We could hang out because we had fun. We went out. And I said, I'll pay my own way. But it wouldn't work out. But a lot, so I believe in asking somebody why, because I really want to know why. Like, you don't think I'm So now he has fear of, re- now he has fear yes, of rejection. I, I want to know. I want to know why a person did So now he has fear of rejection. No, I so now he got fear of rejection. Huh? So now he has fear of rejection then. You know what? I, but I was not. Oh, he didn't have to feel rejection because he had a choice. I gave yeah, he did. Choice. Is- no, no. Look, look, I, I can see if I continue to date him and then came back like a, a month But later, you told like, him y'all could be like, cool, like, though. But that, that wasn't the case. But he you, went out on one but date. You told, one. But you told him y'all could be cool still. But he chose not to. But I gave him a choice. He had all the information up front. He felt to make rejected. His own decision. Like I didn't say. He felt you know, rejected. Well, we'll see. We'll be cool. I didn't say. Well, you know, I don't know. Like I, I wasn't. I wasn't great with it. I was straight up. It's not gonna work. He it's felt gonna work rejected. Today. It's not gonna work tomorrow. It's never gonna work. Like I just. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't like. Oh, Some. You're amazing, but I like. But listen. Life. Like that's, that's not, listen, that's, that's listen. Not authentic. That don't don't sit up there and say that that's not authentic to salute another human being. That's maybe not to you, but that that could be to somebody else. Don't sit up there and say that. I just like, come say, on. Like, I, can't, the, I can't see how somebody can say, "Oh, you're a great guy. You're great," but I like him. Like, no, you can say that because they don't care. about that. They don't want to hear it. Like, so let me so 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 let me let me get this straight. I know I'm smart, but I'm a bad test taker, so that means I need to start looking at myself as being dumb now. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't get that. What do you mean? Nope. What does nah. that mean? Cuz man, that's what you saying. It's like How did I say that? Because you I, you sitting up there saying it's not authentic for somebody to say all of these great things, but my point is, and that's why I gave, that, that's why I gave, that's why I said, down, so I'm, what? What'd you say? If you letting somebody down, what? I said, if you letting somebody down, the last thing they want to hear about is how amazing they are because it's not believable in that moment. It may not be believable to you, but what if they are sincere about that? It ain't about what you you telling a person. So basically, you trying to, but you trying to control. Well, listen, I love, I love, I love how the wraith look, but if I can't afford it, what you want me to do? I'm gonna walk away, but I'm gonna say, "Hey, man, that's a beautiful car. I'm out." You know what? That ain't even a good analogy, Josh. So anyway, <laughs> you going too deep with yeah. it. You yeah, it is. Oh, no, I ain't. No, yeah, it is. No, I ain't. I no. know what I'm doing. Huh? No, I said, no, I ain't. I know what I'm doing. Like, you great. I'm, I'm, so how am I so great? Like, I don't get it. But anyway, then someone else said, bring a new tender bone to the church. I know that's right. See, that's but hold on. They, huh? Let me let me ask you this. Let what? me ask you this though, Queen. There might be some situations, man. People can feel how they feel about a person, right? Mm-hmm. But something can be off. They don't know what. They can't put their finger on it initially. And sometimes people walk away. And sometimes in those decisions, sometimes those are some of the best decisions that people have made. You know, when people it just saying, happens in this light that sometimes. I don't believe that. 
Why you don't believe it? When a woman, a woman can sit up there and say, man, I looked at that dude right there in the grocery store, aisle seven with a cereal at. I know that's my husband. But you can't sit up there and be like, mm, man, that person, you've gotten to know this person a little bit and be like, something just, I don't know. It's just, you know I can't put my finger on it. They know. Sometimes you don't. You do know. Man, you sometimes know. you don't. Sometimes, sometimes you can't vibe with a person. The, 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 the way that the thought process might be off. Your views might be off. Your values might be off. Principle, whatever. It could be anything. So those and the person could seem that's amazing. That's not but the person could seem amazing. But you. But I'm saying sometimes you can't grasp it initially. It might take you some time to be like, I got it. Okay. Sometimes that happens too. That's fair. Sometimes that we happens. Agree to disagree. Yes, we can. Absolutely. Yes. So, and then, so Bex was saying, bring a new tender on the church because that's the thing. They'll be like, they'll push you off or play you off to the side until they see you with somebody else. And then when they see you with somebody else, all of a sudden now, you will kill it. You know, they see something they didn't see in you before. That is very much manipulative that's, behavior. That I, is, and it's also that's also manipulative to bring the new tender on to the church. But we ain't gonna we're gonna leave that alone, right? We just gonna the, we gonna brush it. we gonna brush on past that <laughs> and forget about that. First no. of all, the fact that y'all playing in the house of the Lord but is one thing. That. So no, no, no. It don't have to be church. It could be just out the street. Like you could be, yeah, that's very manipulative. Like they'll push you off to the side until they see you with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But they don't want. It. Huh. And see, I have a, I personally have a way of making a man think he's the only one. Maybe trying to play me to the left. I don't like that. Very manipulative behavior. You got to check that. But anyway, Beck said, that man might be a blessing to another woman. Every person we met isn't meant to be in our life. And I agree. Every person we meet isn't meant to be in our life. I totally agree. My whole point in this conversation is that people aren't up front, that they're either not up front, or they treat you like you and often we allow it and i we've already come to the conclusion that we allow it you know or they tell you about this situation over here like that situation has precedence over you or you know is more than you or bigger than you and you're like wait a minute now you know you're not going to be putting nobody I, now i'm gonna tell y'all the nail this the nail now you can't put nobody over me. you can't put nobody before me you cannot do it it just don't work well with me so, what about Jesus? You want to see somebody act out, do that. What about Jesus? We can't put Jesus before you. You can put Jesus before me because you're supposed to put just Jesus may, just may, Okay, well, just make, sure, just make sure they know that now. <laughs> I'm talking about in the context of dating. It does not work for me. Like, if I even think somebody is before me or getting more attention than I, just, I am, I'm going to have than I'm just, I am. I'm having a problem. That's just me, and I'm not saying it's right, wrong, and different. I'm just saying that that's me. No, that's fair. That's fair. What'd you say? I said that's fair. Yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, J. Crew said lose a job and a man. She said lose a job and a man. Jeez. Okay, let me get that. Okay. Um, Chrissy Lynn said, it's so much about whether you're vibing or not. I've met some amazing men, but that there just wasn't a vibe for me. And I agree now. If the chemistry isn't there, if the vibe isn't there, then you already, it's not even a matter of whether they're seeing someone or not. It's not there for the two of you. That's a different scenario. I'm talking about when this person has chosen to engage you, you know, in any level of relationship and they have their two, three, four, and five. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about if you don't have chemistry, because if you don't have chemistry, then you already know it's not a match. Um, J. Crew says, so I'm not the only one who interrupts a man. Now, I normally do not interrupt him, but tonight I feel very passionate. And we have a debate in this topic because we have very different views on this. He's a man, I'm a woman. So in this particular instance, if I just let him talk, I would never get a word in as And so we, we tend to not agree on this particular topic. So that's why it's, 
as tense as it is tonight. I'm very tense. But the thing is, but the thing is, we don't have to agree. It just needs to be respect has so that both parties can hear each other. Yes. And gain an understanding. That's the only way to bridge the gap and bring parties together. Right. Absolutely. The point I was making earlier. Right. But the point I was making earlier was the fact that one person in the relationship, be a man or woman, try to hit home on their points of emphasis without hearing where the other person is coming from or giving them a chance to respond to whatever the questions are, whatever the whatever could be. That's where the problem is. And that's when you start creating the, the distance in what you're trying to build. Mm-hmm. Nobody can't keep arguing against that. If you're not hurt, if, if I ask you a question, you start to answer and then I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, like if I don't like what I'm hearing, like that's crazy. That's not giving you a chance at all. And a right. lot of times the men are on the other end of that because women will tell you, you don't get me. You don't understand. You just don't get it. Like you hear that so much. It's like, well, damn, wait a minute. Hold up. And you're not giving the chance. That's crazy. How, right. how else am I supposed to sit up there to understand you, right? If I'm listening to you, I hear what you're saying. Let me respond and see if my response is just see what it is first and just respect it for what it is and then be able to have the dialogue. We can't even do that because what? the women are so much into you don't get me. You don't understand. <laughs> We're going to give. So it's 10 o'clock. But we're going to give these people their full hour. So we have a few minutes to go. I, um, I'm going to say at least the next five minutes. We're going to give y'all five minutes back because in the beginning, it takes us a little bit of time to get set up. And I do want to get through everybody's comments before we go ahead and end the live really quick. Um, let's see. And I want to give Josh a chance to respond as well. <laughs> Okay, so that's a good question. Thank you. Go ahead and pull the ones that are good questions. So someone says, why does a man choose the woman behind the the scenes who hasn't put in any work or effort? That's a good question. You don't. But it's a good damn question. So this goes back to comparison. That's from a woman who feels like that woman is not putting in any work behind the scenes. Here's a here's a trick question. That's good. Here's a trick question, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. Is the work that was being put in genuine? Was the work okay for the person? Well, I, I put it like this: as a woman, so we're talking about in the context of dating, right? And I don't know where the question was derived from. The person who asked it. Who was the person who asked that question? Who was it? J. Crew. J. Crew. So can you let us know why you um, asked that question? But I think I could identify with the question. Absolutely it is. You do what you, you have to do. You know what I'm saying? You if you're in a relationship or you in some type, if you engage in a man on any type of level or you want, you're wanting to win his affection, you're going to put in the work. Relationship is work. It's work. Now, if it's disingenuous, that man's going to know it's disingenuous. He's going to know it's not real. He's going to know that that person is not being authentic, and that's a whole nother topic. Uh, what she said? What she said? She said the work was genuine. She said the work was genuine. I got to find Oh, okay. I need to put. I need to read her comment on this live so that people can hear it. That's why I need to go through all of this. Hold on one second, guys, because I need to get all this. Okay, so she said, "Why wouldn't you put in all the work on the back end in private? Does he end up stepping out with a new girl and making her a girlfriend? Girl, that happens all the time. Let's see." That that happens a lot. But anyway, she says you see she put a lot. Hold on. What if I what if letting someone know how you feel jeopardizing the pre existing friendship? 
That's something I want to address. That's, well, I mean, if you had a friendship and then you decided that you liked this person and you let them know, I mean, I think it's only right for you to be upfront and honest and let the person know if you feel a different type of way. But I want to get back to Jay Cruz. She says, when you're putting all the work on private, in private, on the back end, will a man step out with a new girl and make her his girlfriend when she ain't put in nearly half the work that day one has? And why does a man end up choosing a woman who hasn't put in any work and the girl who's been putting in time doesn't get the reward or title? Well, I don't think, well, I don't really look at it like that as getting a reward or a title. Like, I, I mean, you ain't working for a reward or a title now, you know. So you got to question your motivation. As, I see what you're saying now, Josh. You got to question your motivation as to why you're doing what you're doing. She said that it was and time and money hurt. Then she says, try dating someone for a year and then he picks another girl to make as his girlfriend. That's rejection. Why did he choose her? I Okay, so in this particular instance, if he chose somebody else after dating you for a year, he really never liked you. That's just, I'm sorry. <laughs> He was never really engaged, and you had to feel. I that don't. I don't. To put I don't. I don't think that that's necessarily true because a lot can happen within that time period. We we are forgetting that this person is talking about a year, so a lot can go on within that time period. Okay. And things could could happen. Things could be found out and understood. A lot of that can go on within that year. Right. So it could it can go both ways. 